Hey guys, I just got done building this awesome stock tank waterfall for my above ground pool. And the coolest part is that the waterfall can be connected to the existing plumbing so you don't have to use a separate water pump. This rustic water feature really enhances the look and becomes the focal point of the pool. Not to mention that the sound of the running water also aids in diminishing depression, increased mental clarity, greater emotion stability, and an overall sense of well-being. But I really just like the look. The main ingredient to this build is of course the stock tank and two wine barrels. I got this 40 gallon galvanized steel tank from Lowe's for $149. The back part of this pool is very uneven as you can see. I'm gonna have to build a frame for the wine barrels to sit on. Let's go ahead and clean the wine barrel so we can apply a protective spray to protect the natural beauty of the wood. This wood varnish forms a protective barrier against rain and moisture to protect your project and keep them looking at their best. I'm also adding a thick coat of polyurethane to protect the top of the wine barrel in case there may be backsplash where standing waters may collect. Let it dry for a few hours before handling or moving the wine barrels. After letting the wine barrels dry for a few hours, I put them on top of the stand that I built out of some 4x4s and 2x4s and I paint them with exterior paint. I know there will be a lot of water splashing at this location, so I took the time to make sure everything is water resistant. Let's cut out the portion of the stock tank for the waterfall. Because this is galvanized stock tank, by the way, I'm advised not to weld to galvanize. I want to leave enough room so I can screw mount the spillway plate where the water actually falls. I guess I'll just call it the bill or the chute. You guys can make this whatever size works for you. For this particular tank, I'm cutting 4 inches down from the top and 15 inches wide. To make the bill, I bought a street sign online because one, I cannot use steel, it will rust. Two, I was told to use stainless steel, but it is super expensive. Three, aluminum is soft and easy to work with, or so I thought. I started off by cleaning the adhesive plastic coating off the street sign. I admit this process required some time and tested my patience. I used a wire brush and tons of sandpaper. Then I rounded the edge and sand down to a smooth corner. I drew a template using a piece of paper before transferring it onto an aluminum plate. So my overall length of the plate is 21 inches where I'll be folding 3 inches on either side, leaving a 15 inch wide spillway. I'm leaving 1 and a quarter inch on the bottom so I can screw mount the plate to the stock tank with some watertight screws. Right here is where I draw the cut in a slightly downward angle for the bill so that it would direct water downward. I saw a video where this person used a flathead screwdriver to score into the aluminum making a small channel where he was then able to bend it so I was hoping that it would work for me. I clamped a piece of 2x4 and used it as leverage then using two wood clamps to hold it in place. I then attempted to bend the aluminum. Oh! It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Super frustrated last night when this broke, so I had to take a break. Um, new plan today, I'm gonna clean all the sides up, cut all the pieces out, and then we're gonna weld it. I uh, didn't really wanna do welding because I'm not experienced in welding. 
but uh, I don't have any more time. It's just uh, uh, been wasting a lot of time trying to get this piece. Um, I asked a metal company to help me make one and uh, to fabricate one, and uh, the cost was uh, over 250, which is uh, something I'm not willing to spend. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have to do some welding, uh, aluminum welding. Uh, it didn't didn't seem too hard, so uh, hopefully it goes well. I welded three L-shaped bracket to the bill and drill holes in them so I can screw mount it to the stock tank once it is dry fitted. The bolt and nut that I'm using are galvanized and the washers are called bonded sealing washers which is outfitted with a rubber gasket. They work extremely well for what I need them to do. Once all the nuts and bolts were installed I use an angle grinder to cut down the bolt and grind all the sharp edges to smooth. I use a wire brush to clean up everything else. It wasn't as bad as I thought after the cleaning. I use fused liquid nails to seal up gaps and hide the bad welding job. Fused is no joke. It provides a strong and durable bond. It is waterproof and weatherproof. Bridges gap up to 3 eighths of an inch for interior and extremely effective for exterior as well. You can really trust the stuff. All right guys, so not the best looking, but I think this should work. This took me a while, man. I have to fight this thing this whole entire time. Every time I try to weld, it would warp. Um, it was just kind of a nightmare, but um, we'll see how long this holds up. Time to install the plunger valve. Depending on your setup, you can decide where you want to cut the two and a half inch hole for the plunger insert. Using a two and a half inch hole saw, cut the hole and use a file to clean up all the sharp debris and sand it down to make sure there are no more sharp edges. The head on the nozzle of the plunger valve is going to be too big to be installed flat to the stock tank because of the curved design on the stock tank. I really knew this from the beginning, even before I drew the two and a half inch hole, but I'll show you guys the workaround. The head of the nozzle can be taken apart. We don't need the head because all we do is need the water to flow in and the head does not do anything. Using a three and a half inch hole saw, we can cut off the access of the nozzle, but still leave enough room for the space for the rubber gasket to hang onto and still make a seal. So just as I expected, the head right here is too big to sit evenly or straight because of the curves and the divots and stuff on here so we're gonna have to cut we're gonna have to cut it off I didn't want it to do that but that's the only way it's gonna make it work yep So, didn't get a perfect cut, but this should work. Just do a lot of meat on here that this uh, gas is gonna be able to hang on to. It's gonna work just fine. There you go.
this is my return and everyone's going to have a little different uh setup so that goes to the uh inlet over here i use the uh t that's gonna go under up into this connector into the hose And I took the hose apart to show you guys how I'm gonna hook this up. Super excited we got to this point. I got my PVC pipe all glued up, ready to go. Uh, I bought two of these uh, plunger valves from Amazon. I really only needed one. Uh, two of these hoses from Amazon as well. And uh, I'll be using this for another project, but uh, you can check this out. Um, you can also do this uh, with the PVC, except uh, that's gonna be a little bit too permanent for me. Um, I, may, I may wanna move this certain way or adjust it or something like that. PVC will just be uh, a little bit too, uh, too permanent. So this is the moment that's true. I'm gonna open this valve. And I'm going to go and shut off the return valve over there by the pool. It should direct all of the water into here and flow out. So, <laughs> wish me luck. Okay, you can see the water coming in. All right, looks like it's working. See what happens all right so it is filling up and it's almost getting there i don't know if you guys can see it. it's kind of hard to see but i want to film the moment that the water is coming out of that chute there it goes i think it's coming out here it is here it is All right, yay, yay, look at that thing, yes, yes, oh heck yeah, look at that thing, Woo! beautiful, it worked. So overall, this was a difficult DIY project, but if you could find somebody to help you make the bill or the spillway, or you could do it yourself easily, that would make the project so much easier. But with all that said, it is so satisfying to see everything come together and the hard work paid off because now we have a beautiful functioning water feature, whether we're in the pool or not. I'm proud of the way that it came out. And that's a wrap guys and gals. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.